Good afternoon. I was going to try to make a, one of those little shorts videos on this and there is just no way possible it can be done. So I had an email this morning that was pretty nasty in scope, calling me everything but a white boy. And it started off with accusing me of being jealous for somebody's clergy status, if you will. I hate to break your heart, but it's not possible for me to be jealous of that. Been a member of the clergy since 2005. You should ask yourself why you didn't know that. Very likely it's because it's not a trophy to hold up. Absolutely not. It's also not something that man just chooses for man. It's not. Father doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. There's no two ways about it. It's really obvious when somebody walks in the way, or at least attempts to walk in the way. They will do what they can to make sure that what they do, what they say, would be in favor of the Father. That doesn't mean they're going to walk around and be nice. Quite the contrary. People that refuse to blow their trumpet, well, the good book has plenty to say about those folks. I do not want to be spat out. So I'm not going to be lukewarm. So you may ask why I don't talk about the Father. Well, because it's not what he sent me here to do. There's, there's a, a host of reasons why I don't. But if people are uncomfortable with the level of honesty and truth that I give you with the news, you certainly are not going to be good with what I have to say about the Word. The truth is, Christianity is the great deception in and of itself. That is the great deception. I would urge you to investigate what happened at the Council of Nicaea and start asking a bunch of questions why seems a little bit odd to me that the very two groups of individuals that were responsible for the crucifixion of Yeshua happened to be the two groups of individuals that are running the doctrines and dogmas of men. You should probably ask why that is, followed up by asking what it is that you should know that you don't because there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff that's been changed. A lot of things that's just been completely misdirected and misguided. I could sit here and talk to you about it until I'm blue in the face, but it won't do any good. Why? Because that is a journey that you need to take on your own. Again, people can't ha handle the honesty and the truth about news daily events that goes on, I really don't expect them to handle the truth very well about the Father. Not bad stuff. It's just different stuff. Things you haven't been told about. Things that you were misguided about. And it's been going on literally since the Council of Nicaea. That, that's when so many things were decided upon and so many things were changed. Again, that's your walk, not mine. I started that walk in 2005. I uh, have a pretty interesting testimony. In my opinion, I think it's actually pretty humorous. But it really speaks to the Father's will and the Father's way. The biggest thing that I could tell people when it comes from the Word, or to the Word, is that we need to understand 
what these times that we are in currently is about. Now, Ben Davison of Suspicious Observers is absolutely convinced that he was put here at such a time in such a place for a reason. I cannot argue that when it comes to Ben. In fact, I completely agree with Ben. I think he was. At the same time, so was I. Why? Why me? Because I don't need man's approval. I don't seek that. I don't need that. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm not even trying to sell you myself. Because that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm supposed to be coming here, telling you the truth to the best of my ability about what's going on in the world, warning you about the upcoming pole shift. And again, I, I would urge you to no end to go and, and watch Ben's videos, listen to what Ben has to say, because the man knows what he's talking about. And I'm supposed to help people understand how it is that they can achieve doing what they're going to need to do when these things take place. And I, I think that we are right at the beginning of that. I think we are right at the beginning of a life that none of us wants. But we won't have a choice. There's a lot of people out there that think that they've got it beat. They may be homesteaders, they may be off-gridders. And while they are certainly far ahead most people, including myself, there's important parts of the equation that they're missing. I can't seem to get this information out. Why do I have so much frustration at so many of these so-called prepper channels because they won't stop and think. Look, when I started on my preparedness journey, and I've said this before, I did not turn on YouTube and start watching videos. I didn't do none of that. I didn't turn on nothing. I sat down and I started to think to myself, what is it that's going to be needed? What tasks will we need to do? What roles will we need to fill? And I started from scratch. And one of the most important things that I realized is that we are not ready as a society to even begin this journey. Not even the beginning of this journey. Why? Because of convenience. We have had so many manners and methods of convenience that has been given to us over the past several centuries that we forgot how hard some things are truly going to be. I keep asking the same question and nobody will answer it. Nobody will answer it. No, no one. Baron Dependent won't even address it. I'm sure Joe with Viking Preparedness won't address it. All the common ones, Angry Prepper, Magic Prepper, you name it. And same goes too with the Homestead and the Off-Grid channels. Nobody will address this. And it's something we damn well better talk about before the time comes. Because there's no way around it. There are some things that are complete absolutes, and this is one of them. I hear a lot of channels that are filled with ego talking about they won't need nothing because they're totally self-sufficient. Okay. I would say they're probably wrong. There may be a very, very, very tiny part of folks involved in, in homesteading and off-gridding that take care of all of the areas that they're going to need. But it's going to be such a small subset of people 
Look, even people that pride themselves in homesteading and off-grid lifestyles, they are still very dependent on, and I won't say the system, but they are dependent on systems. Do these individuals provide all their own grain, their feed for their cattle? Do they provide all their own straw, their own hay? Probably not. Most do not. A lot of them simply get it from other farmers and whatnot that they know. Therein lies the problem. Because we won't have a way to plant that much, to harvest that much, to process that much. We're not going to have a way to do that. Not by hand. I, I don't know what people are thinking. I do know this. The individuals, especially like the one that sent, sent his email to me, you people are fraught with codependency. If you feel the need to condemn someone for calling out individuals that are literally making stuff up and then making content in return to make money, you're fraught with codependency. You're teetering on the edge of being trauma bound. Why is it important that people know the truth about the news? Why is it so important? Why is it so important that people know the difference between a technical glitch and whether or not something was, was hacked, whether it was a cyber attack? Why is that important? I honestly can't tell you because the reason why, it ha why it's so important hasn't happened yet. But see, when you've got so many people just because of baseless claims, because people will be happy because they hear you say it, believing things are going one way when they're actually going another way you could actually be throwing a huge stumbling block in front of that person. We need people to be critical thinkers, not sheep. We need people to be able to individually test everything that is put before them, not just go along because it makes us feel good. That's not doing anybody any good, especially yourself. We all need to look at this stuff. We all need to try to get to the bottom of the truth, not the bottom of how we want to feel, not the bottom that will support our position, but the truth. What is wrong with the truth? I pose that question. I will continue to pose that question because I have had the literal shit beat out of me all of my life because I seek truth and I don't put up with other people's lies. Maybe that's why the Father chose me. Because I can stay on task and I don't have to please other people. Maybe that's why. I believe it is. Look, how many channels out there have attributed these fires going on in Tennessee to some type of terrorism. I've seen some claims about high energy weapons being used, right? Or, you know, the dues, directed energy weapons, my bad. I've seen claims about how it's the immigrants. I've seen claims how it's sleeper cells for the Chinese or for this group. or for I mean, people have been out of their damn minds with this stuff. You know why it's important we don't do that? Because when something is actually a result of one of those things, we won't be able to define it. Not if you're running and screaming that kind of stuff for every little thing that happens. That in particular... Does that look to you like it was some terrorist 
It doesn't look like that to me. Does it look to you like that was some kind of immigrants? Nah, I don't think so. Literally, the energy company said that it looks like they're at least partially responsible for those fires. Now, how many individuals have you heard blame it on one thing or another? How many individuals have you heard have blamed this whole meta outage on a cyber attack? Likewise, how many of you heard the individuals blaming the cell phone outage on cyber attacks, which was not? Why? Why would people want to prop up liars? Again, that's a, that's a very sickening level of codependency. Very sickening level. And sadly, our society is rampant with it. I do what I do because the Father sent me here to do it. Don't like it. Never have from day one. I would rather just go back in my corner and do my own thing and be quiet like I had lived the majority of my life and just do my own thing. But that's not his will. Just as it isn't his will for me to stay silent when people are misleading and misguiding not not going to do that. You see, I crossed the Father once. And I'm not willing to do that again. I am not. That's a lesson that you're so interested in, in finding out for yourself. You go right ahead. But it's one I will damn well never forget. And damn well will never try again. And to think that you're going to send me an email to get me to? Good luck. We should be looking inward. Every single one of us. I do. I do daily. Do I like what I see? Mm, not so much. But I don't hate it either. I'm a hell of a lot better than I used to be. I don't give in to temptation anymore. I don't have temptation anymore. Thank you, Father. A lot of people want to give in to that. They want that quick fix, whatever it may be. Whatever it is that they have an addiction to, whether it be money, whether it be porn, whether it be ego, pride. I gave all that up. All it will do is lead you down a hole. Even the little things, they all add up. But before you condemn a man for actually trying to live by what the word actually says, you might want to ask yourself why it's so important for you to defend a liar. Shalom.